Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to Mad Break Studio. We're back in uh, Pixel Core Studios, and Mark's going to show us Making waves. Making waves. In yeah. motion. Yeah, I'm in a summary feel. Uh, but not kind of beach waves, but just like sine waves. Different ways oh, to make waves I in motion. beach waves. Well, <laughs> we could do that too, but we're gonna, I'm going to just do different ways to make waves as, as kind of a pretext for exploring uh, different functions of motion. Because, okay. you know, it helps to understand what's possible in motion. It's always great to see what's different ways to attack something. So if you want to make a wave, okay, and I have two uh, graphics in here. I've got this little bubble that's from motions uh, built-in particle images. And then I've got this car, which is from uh, iStockphoto.com, where we get a lot of our stuff. Um, and it was originally an Illustrator file, and this I think I just saved this as a PDF. But it, Motion will read Illustrator PDF files, and they're vector, so you can make them big as small as you want. But I want something with direction, because the ball doesn't really have any particular direction. So one way to make a wave is with a motion path. And what I mean by that, in the library, if I go to behaviors, under basic motion, there's a motion path behavior. And uh, you know we did this in the spirograph right. episode, or if, if that's already but that's already been out. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's certainly been if you haven't, you'll yeah. see it. So the motion path behavior, I drag the motion path behavior. I'm going to drag it onto this little ball first, and I'll turn the car off and just focus on the ball. Um, by default, I'm going to hit F7 to bring up the heads-up display. By default, it's just a straight line, and if I play, the ball just you know, moves off the really screen. Really exciting stuff. Yeah, real exciting stuff. However, this is what's kind of cool is I can take that path shape and change it to a wave. wave. That's the wave. Yeah, and there's all kind of other interesting things, but I'm going to focus on the, on the wave right here. So I do the wave, and I've got this little wave. I can drag it over here. I see can how it's that, the path make it red. wider. It's hard to see. To see it's a little hard, the red line. That'd be nice to be another color. I agree. So frequency, I can change its frequency, um, and I can change its amplitude. And if I play that will move along the wave. I can increase the loop so it moves a little faster. OK? And if I move it off the screen, I'm going to command spacebar drag out a little bit, just hold down the spacebar to pan over, and move this out of the way. And oops, I deselected it. Drag that guy over. <laughs> Let me stop playback. Drag this guy over, and drag this guy over, just so it moves across the screen. OK, deselect it. So we've got a ball. That's one way to create some mo some, some ball, wave motion. Yeah. And if I didn't want the ball on there, I could take the the car. Uh, let's add the motion path to the car instead and turn it on. And the car is moving. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. You know, what's what doesn't look right about that? It's, it's not following the path. Well, it's following the path. I mean, it's the orientation of the car. The orientation, yeah. So if we go back to the uh, library here, there's a snap alignment to motion right. behavior. So I'll dr I'll pop that on. And by default, it's like, there we go. That's what you wanted, right? That's, no, that's not, not exactly. Ridiculous. Yeah, so I'll change the axis to vertical and the heads-up display. Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay. This, uh, so, I'm having deja so, vu on this a little bit. I know. We did a car along a path. But okay, that, that's, this is not what this This is a wave. This is a wave. So we got it. Okay, this all is right. a wave. So that's one way is with the motion path behavior. That's, that's all I wanted to get across. It's like, okay, that's one thing you can do. So I'm going to get rid of that and look at another option, uh, which is using a replicator. Let's move the car up here and turn it off. And where did a little ball go? Right here. So I'm going to use a replicator. So with this guy selected, I'm going to press L. You can also tap the replicator button in the bottom corner there. And immediately we get this big collection of these guys, which looks kind of cool by itself. <laughs> but again, we have some shapes. Wave, wave. Wave, right? But this is going to do something different. The other one moved one graphic across a wave. This guy creates a wave. Uh, makes iterations of the ball across with the way. Iterations, yeah, because a replicator makes copies of things, right? So if I go to the inspector here, um, I can increase the number of points along this thing. Yep. And uh, let's also change a few other things like the amplitude. You know, we can change the frequency of the wave. So same types of things we were doing before. I'll leave it like that. And then here, nothing's animated. Uh, let me go back to the beginning, hit I, just so it starts at the beginning. But there's this little offset parameter. And if oh, I, I see you can. Make. Uh, that's points I was dragging on. If I drag on the offset parameter, they move along. And that starts to get a little more interesting. Let's go to about 12 points. So I could take that offset parameter and control click on it. I could set keyframes, or in this case, I'm going to add a rate parameter behavior to it and crank up the rate to some number and play. And I get this nice uh, movement 
along, along it, right? Along so, the wave. so yeah, along the wave. So I can create animation that way, and have a nice wave type movement. If I deselect it, you won't actually see the lines, but you see you get a nice snake-like movement. So if you want to move a snake along something, you know, it works great like that. And of course, you can instead of replicating that. Thing, I could replicate the car. I'm just going to drag the car onto that little source. This is the cell. Right. And then I'll get the car along there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Looks kind of funny, right? Right. But um, in fact, let's take the whole thing and just move it over. And here again, like before, we had snap alignment to motion. But in this case, I'm going to actually go to the simulation behaviors, back in behaviors, and there's a line to motion simulation. So if I drag that I believe onto the replicator or maybe onto the car itself. We should get it to align to motion. Actually, you know what? I don't think that's going to work here. I don't think it's going to allow us to do that. But here's what we can do. No problem. Have no fear. If we select the replicator, go back to the replicator inspector, there's an option to align the angle. See what there, align angle? Mm -hmm. And there, there now is. we've got the cars kind of moving along that... Um, Set of planar job point. The wave. Okay, so you've got them moving along the wave, but they're each turning as they go along with it. There's so many there because I've got a lot of points that uh, it looks a little bit crazy, but I can reduce the number of points to maybe uh, six or something. Okay, and the cool thing about the replicator is you can have each of those cars be a different color, uh, things like that. So you can kind of change how it looks. So it doesn't look they're all the same cars. You can have a little traffic jam going on. So you can, are you going to do that? you got to change the color of the cars? I, I'm not going to. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to do one more thing. We've, I know we have limited time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to increase the points here. I just want to show you, if you are doing a replicator, one kind of fun thing to do is replicators can be 3D. See that 3D checkbox there? Uh -huh. So I can hit that. Even before I do the 3D checkbox, right. one thing I like to do, sorry, I'm going to jump ahead. There's a scale end parameter. So I can make one end of this be really small and create a whole other kind of look. Okay, or I could scale the end up and just kind of fool around. It has kind of like a, a bigger head and a skinnier tail, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, but if I do turn on the 3D checkbox and I add a camera to this thing, I'll use the camera in the toolbar there, switch to 3D. What's kind of cool about this is um, uh, this thing I can rotate in 3D space and I can tell the replicator, hey, I want you to face the camera. And now I've got this little snake dude guy. Um, moving in 3D space. That's freaking that's, that's cool. That's kind of cool, right? It is cool. <laughs> and of course, you can move the camera around him as he's moving, but I've got that, that little, uh, little inchworm moving along. Can you add okay. some eyes and a face? Um, I guess you could do that. <laughs> you could add another, another copy of this in front of it and yeah. have a little eyes on it, but kind of a neat thing to do yeah. with a wave, right? Absolutely. So that's a whole other idea is, is using a replicator. So, and the last thing I want to do is to look at what you could do with a particle emitter to do this. Along a wave. Um, yeah, so again, I'll hit, uh, this time, uh, instead of a replicator, which is L, I'll hit E, which is a particle emitter. And by default, what a particle emitter does is just... It spits out <laughs> spheres or spits out whatever. Yeah, it spits out a bunch of those things. But once again, check this out. If I go to the emitter inspector, the shape is point, so it's emitting them from a point right. in space, just one point. But we've got all these options again. So I'll check, I'll select wave. And it's a little hard to tell what's going on because they're moving. So if I set the speed to zero, now we can see them. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to move the, spread, spread this out a little bit, start and end points, kind of like we did before. And then it's building all those along the wave. And that, that looks a little bit kind of interesting, you know, it's kind of weird. Um, it's, they're not really moving along it, they're just kind of sitting there. Yeah. So uh, that's okay. Uh, there's a thing called phase, I'm gonna stop playback. Phase lets this thing kind of bounce Enjoy. up and down. So one thing you can do, I'm gonna take the phase, and I'm right clicking and I'm adding a parameter behavior called oscillate. So that phase kind of moves up and down. And the only thing is, it only works if you have uh, a little bit of speed in there. For some reason, it doesn't oscillate until you have a little bit of speed. The wave is oscillating. Yeah. Basically. The wave up is oscillating down. up and down. Um, let's crank up a little more oscillation there for that thing. Oscillate, amplitude, and rate uh, the speed of the oscillation. Let's crank that up. So now we can kind of see it moving up and down. Right. 
So, again, just something totally different. It doesn't look as still, interesting. It's still animating along the wave. It's still animating along the wave. It's just that the, the, these guys have some speed, so they're kind of moving around as it's animating along the wave. My favorite thing, though, with the emitter is to do something a little different than that. So rather than have the emitter set to a wave, I'm going to leave it set to a point. So they're all just bursting out of this point. And I'm also going to, as they're bursting out, let's increase their speed quite a bit. And I'm only going to have them go in a straight line. So I'm setting the emission range to zero. So right. shooting them out. But check this out. I'm going to make them smaller. Uh, get the scale down so they're small. And then what I'm going to do is have this emitter bounce up and down. OK? Because watch what will happen. So if I go to the properties of the emitter itself, and it's, it's Y position, right, up and down, I'll control click on that, add parameter behavior, parameter behavior and oscillate so it, it bounces up and down. And then I'll increase the speed at which it's moving up and down. Now, do you see how it's kind of making a wave there? Yep. So it's actually making it. Oh, well, I got that. That's the, the wrong. That's the wrong one here. This one will make it go faster. Yeah. There, there you go. So it's falling along wave because they're yeah, oscillating. Yeah. It just it's just spitting those out, and by doing so, it's it's creating a wave. And then you can just play with, you know, if you have a lot more of these guys in terms of the birth rate, right. they'll start to blend together and make a solid line. So now it's, it's actually drawing a wave. It's like you're literally like, you know, moving your arm up and down. It's just creating a wave. And then you can have all kind of fun. You can put this in 3D space, change how fast it's moving. Or just as the last thing, I'll throw the car in there so it's doing the cars instead. <laughs> and then, <laughs> That's, That's kind of cool, right? Because it's got this kind of funky pattern to it. And you can have it, the car twist as it's doing it. So um, th this is kind of my favorite one because you're animating, you've got multiple copies, and uh, you can have it do all kind of crazy stuff. So, you know, none of this is, is like, oh, how do I use this in a project? There's, you know, you kind of got to play around with it. But the whole idea it's of using like, waves. It's like, uh, this continues your theme of spirograph, except with using waves. Yeah, yeah. Just different ways to think about that you can use a motion half behavior for a wave. You can use a replicator. You can use a particle emitter. And it's useful when you're building animation in motion to think about all of those options, behaviors, particles, replicators, uh, as ways right. of, uh, of building your animation. Well, that's so fantastic. Fun ideas now, to think about. Now, you have a specific tutorial on working with replicators and particles. I do. I've got one in particles, mm -hmm. and I've got one specifically on replicators that goes into detail on, on how to work with those uh, ripple training. Excellent. You'll find those at rippletraining.com. Yep. And uh, feel free to email us and follow us on Twitter at Ripple Training. And uh, thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio.